The emergency required other important action that same day, January 4th. Two entries were made into the reactor building to recover the logbook and a neutron detector. This led to later installation of remote reading instruments and audible alarms as a warning against further trouble with the reactor. Also, the reactor building exterior had to be surveyed from the ground for evidence of damage. There was none. Fire and ambulance equipment had to be decontaminated. The field command post, which was to serve for several weeks, had to be firmed up with additional trailers and power equipment. Medical checkups of entry personnel were carried out. Collection of scientific evidence and data went forward simultaneously with the recovery of bodies. The first positive evidence as to the nature of the accident came from a nuclear accident dosimeter recovered from the reactor building. Activation of its gold foil into radioactive gold-198 tended to indicate that an uncontrolled chain reaction had taken place. Teams were thoroughly briefed to minimize exposure time. One minute was set as the time limit in high radiation fields. A health physicist accompanied each team and also acted as a timer. He remained outside high radiation fields to minimize radiation exposure. This was done to conserve available health physicists for the many operations yet to be performed. Iodine-131 found in sampling of air, soil, sagebrush, and animals collected near the SL-1 verified minimal release of activity from the reactor building. Within three hours after each entry into the SL-1 site, film badges were processed to determine the precise exposures received. After the initial entry, no personnel received more than nine Rentgen's gamma exposures. 